Today I'm going to be making some little picture frame boxes with some pressed flowers and some dried flowers. And I have been saving these flowers for so long now and I am finally getting around to actually assembling it all together and making cute little frames for them. So I actually have a bunch of dried flowers. These two are going to be the only ones that I actually keep in their vases like this, at least for now anyway. This one is going to be staying in the vase forever just because I really like this one. These were just a big bouquet of yellow roses and so I put about half, maybe a little less than half, I don't remember how many there were, but I put about half of them in here along with the greenery that came with it to make it look more full. And I just put them in this tiny little vase and I like to keep these just the way they are. These ones were actually part of a little bit of a bigger bouquet. It wasn't, it wasn't very big, but there were some other pink flowers that were with this and I don't know what type of flowers they were, but whatever kind of flowers it were, when they dried, they just kind of crumbled and fell apart. So they just, I had to throw those ones away. They didn't stay together at all, but the rest of them looked pretty cute. So I kept the little greenery and the other little ones, but my main favorite ones are these little purple roses. They're so cute. So I still think these look very cute and they, they look fine in this vase, but also this vase needs to be cleaned. But eventually I would like to get a bigger um, like shadow box to put this in. And I'd probably trim the stems down a little bit. I have them tied together with rubber bands right now. If you can kind of see through the glass just because I want them to stay in this little um, arrangement. These are the only two other ones that I have in vases. I got these to use in my hair for prom last year. Um, so we just cut some of them off, but then we had a lot left over because we couldn't find a smaller one. So this was like the smallest we could get. And I did actually cut up a lot of this and press a lot of them. So these are my pressed ones right here. Gotta be gentle so I don't break them. And then these flowers, this was kind of just like a random bouquet. And whenever I let my flowers dry, I don't do like a specific like method for it. I just kind of let them stay in the vase until like for a few weeks until they're all dried out. And these ones um, did not dry the best, obviously. Like these ones are pretty ugly, but these cute little pink roses turned out adorable. They still look great. And then the only other ones I think I will save are probably gonna be these little ones. I'll probably just, oh, I'll probably just cut them off right here and then just have this cute little like yellow little vine stem, I guess. I think those ones are pretty cute too. So there's that one and this one. So those ones I'm about to cut off and then I'll throw the rest away because I don't really like the way those look. I might keep these pieces just for greenery and they actually are pretty glittery too. But yeah, so I have three shoe boxes that I keep all my pressed flower stuff in besides the ones that are in vases. Those stay in the vases. So first, this one's not very full, but I have this one that is meant for all of the pressed ones that are flat and there's really hardly anything in there. Um, and also I did like one round of pressed flowers before and only a few of them turned out decent. And even the ones that I did save that I thought were decent, I still just don't think are very cute, but I still will use them and try and do something with them. And then the rest I have what I showed earlier, this sheet of baby's breath that I pressed. Next, I have this shoe box that is just full of like greenery pieces. And these are all dried. You have to be very careful with them because they're extremely fragile. So these I am mainly saving for when I get to make some more arrangements in the shadow boxes. So that way it's not just like flowers and nothing else. That way I have more options of like greenery to fill it out all the way. So this is my little greenery one that has a lot of leaves. And then this one is the best one of them all. This one actually has the dried flowers in them. And these ones, I think the majority of these ones in here are really cute. So in here, you can see, I'm not gonna pick them up because I don't wanna accidentally crumble or break any of them. But I've got these two really big roses that I love. And then I have this little stem of these cute little pink flowers that I think are adorable. And then there's another one right here. And then I've just got some other like yellow flowers. Um, I also have more of these tiny little pink roses. I have three of those. And then I still have these three pink roses that I'm gonna cut later. But yeah, this just has a lot of the actual flowers that I like to keep. Those I'm not a huge fan of. I may or may not use those, but you know, just keeping them in case I do decide to use them one day. But yeah, there's a lot of really cute flowers in here. Okay, now let's talk about what I'm actually gonna be making today. 
So I know I'm gonna make one arrangement with the dried flowers in the shadow box, and then I'm gonna make at least one, but maybe two, frames with just the pressed flowers in the middle. So this is the little shadow box that I have. I'm holding the glass in it with my thumbs right now. This is the frame. Um, I took the back off of it because I already have it kind of arranged a little bit with the roses that I want to use. And this is about how deep it is. It's not very wide at all. But this is also a five by seven frame. Now this is what I have for the back. It has this little backing, I guess, and then this little uh, kind of box frame. Okay, I took the glass out of the frame so that I don't accidentally break it. Essentially, whenever I have all my flowers in here arranged the way I want, I'm gonna glue them down, and then this frame is gonna kinda go over it like this with the glass in it. Now, this is not exactly how it's going to be set up, but these are the roses that I want to use for it. So, you know how I said that I saved about half, maybe less or more, I don't know, um, to save in the vase? These are the ones that I cut the stems off of so that I could actually use in an arrangement. In a little shadow box. And then I kept a lot of leaves that were with it too, that I thought had dried pretty well. I know I'm gonna do these yellow roses in this picture frame. There are five yellow roses. I might add the three pink tiny roses. And the only other thing I'm thinking about adding is cutting off some of these little baby's breath ones. So these ones are not flattened. These are the actual little baby's breath that just dried the way it is. And I am very glad that I saved this because these are so small and dainty and they're white. And so they can kind of easily be stuck in pretty much any floral arrangement. Okay, there's something that I just noticed. And before I show it, I just want to say that pretty much every time that I have let my flowers dry, like in their bases, I usually pour all the water out. Well, I have, because then they're gonna take longer to dry if I don't pour the water out, right? But obviously they're not fully dry whenever it starts. And I have not touched these in months, a long time. So there's a little bit of a uh, fuzz growing on here. Uh, probably because the stems were still kind of wet whenever I let them dry. So definitely need to clean that off without breaking them or I might end up just cutting the stems off. I'll deal with that afterwards. Right now, we're, we're not messing with that right now. Right now, we're just gonna be messing with this top part, so. The rest of them are fine. No, there are no other issues with the rest of them, but uh, yeah, I, I definitely will be taking care of that. <laughs> okay, so I already showed you the frame that I'm using for the little shadow box one. This shadow box and those two frames right there, bird just flew by the window. <laughs> These are the only ones that I bought from Hobby Lobby. At least the majority of the rest of the ones that I have are from Dollar Tree. And if they're not from Dollar Tree, then I don't know where they're from. So I have them in this little tub right here. And I only have three in here from Dollar Tree and then those two right there that are the traditional types of frames that you use for pressed flowers where it's got the two sheets of glass in the middle and you just sandwich the flowers in between them. And then boom, you see through it. So I have five total. I have those two right there. And then I have these three right here. I am most likely going to end up painting these. One of them, I know I will for sure paint white. The other two, I might paint like a fun color or something, um, but I just don't want to leave them black just because it doesn't really match anything else. It doesn't match any of the other frames that I have. And then it also just doesn't match the room that it will be in. These are all four by fours and they're squares. Okay, I went ahead and grabbed one of the ones I had up there. This one is a five by five square. And then the other one, I did keep the label so I know what size it is. It's a five by seven. But anyway, this is not the frame that I'm using today. Please be more careful than I was when cutting these flowers. Luckily, these are fine. And I was doing it, you know, relatively close to the ground. So even if they did fall, they weren't gonna break. The only reason I cut them like that was for video purposes. Now I have these three little roses. Okay, I took the flowers off the back of the board and I'll mess with the arrangement later. But first, I want to paint this board since this is gonna be the back of the frame. I wanna paint it green just so that if there are any like gaps or whatever, which there probably will be, that you can see behind the holes or behind the leaves. I want it to just look more cohesive, I guess. I don't wanna just see this solid white background right behind my green leaves and stuff. So I'm gonna paint this green and I originally was planning on using acrylic paint 
and maybe just watering it down to make it thinner because this is like a, a fabric. It's not just a solid like piece of cardboard like how most picture frames are. This actually has some little cushion. Um, I was gonna use acrylic paint, but part of the reason I'm not going to is because I actually don't have the colors with me right now because I'm at home and my paint is in my dorm. But I do have a couple watercolor palettes so I'm gonna test that out and I probably could find some green acrylic paint somewhere, but I'm gonna test the watercolors first and see how that works. Okay, I actually really like how this is turning out so far with the watercolors. And I'm just using this very cheap little watercolor palette and I'm just kinda dipping it in the water, putting it on here, and then I dip it back in the water and just kinda spread it out like that. And I've just been doing that over and over and over again for this whole thing. But also, you know, like how I said, my paints are currently in my dorm, my acrylic paint. So are all my brushes. So I am limited to just using these little brushes that came in these palettes. So I have this palette right here and that palette there, but they both come with the same brush. <laughs> yeah, it's just gonna take a while to do this. I don't really know how long I've been doing this for, but this is, you know, real time. This isn't a voiceover. <laughs> you can see this is a very slow process since the brush is so tiny. I have to work in very small sections. And this was also just the very first like shade of green that I tested and I was like, boom, that's perfect. Right now. I'm enjoying it though. I'm just gonna watch YouTube while I do this. This is very relaxing, very fun to do. You know, I don't have to think about it at all. I'm just kinda trying to fill up the whole thing. Okay, I just finished painting it. I think it looks really good. This is gonna be the perfect background. But the entire thing is still wet, obviously, from how much water I use to paint the whole thing. Depending on how long it takes, I, at some point, will probably take a hairdryer to it and see if that helps it dry faster. But for now, I'm just gonna let it sit and I'm just gonna kinda hang out for a little bit while I let it dry. Okay, I haven't shown a lot of, or really any of this process yet of me arranging these flowers in here. I have this bottle of Elmer's glue that I have just been using to put just a tiny bit of glue on the back side of the flowers and leaves. And I tried to just put it on the parts that I know are gonna be touching the back. Basically, I just wanted to add the glue so that hopefully it'll actually dry and they will stay in place, even if this box gets like shook around a lot, which hopefully it won't, but you never know. And then I only cut off like one little piece of the baby's breath so far. And I just kind of cut it up into much smaller sections. Uh, I played around with putting the little roses in there and they look okay, but I think I am gonna save them for something else just cause I feel like it's just too many roses. I want this to mainly be the yellow ones. When I was playing around with the baby's breath, I do think that the, since they're white and so small that it goes well with it and I like it better. So yeah, now I am just going to play around with the arrangement of the baby's breath, see what I like. And if I need to add any more leaves, I can. Um, like, I don't really like how I can see the stem of this leaf right here, so I might try and cover that. I'm not really sure yet, but we'll see. But yeah, this is what I have so far. All right, this is what I have so far for the shadow box. And I like it, I'm happy with it. It still has to dry and I still gotta assemble the whole thing. And so far, the only thing I wish I would have done differently is I wish I would have done a much darker green for the background. I don't like that shade of green. Maybe when it's all said and done, I will be able to kind of take some tiny paintbrushes and kind of fill in the main gaps that I see with the darker green. But we'll see. We, we might not get to that point. Or, or maybe I'll end up liking it when it's, it's all framed and everything. We'll see. But now I am getting to my little picture frame. So I took apart one of these and when I took the little label thing out of it, it was being held on there with this little piece of double-sided tape that is really difficult to get off. 
but I think I'm just going to use that to my advantage and use that to kind of stick the flowers on and I shouldn't have to glue them, which I wasn't really planning on gluing these anyway since they are going to be, you know, flush with the glass. I don't want to be able to see the little glue outside the edges of the flowers, you know? So this is the back side of the glass. This is the front side of the glass, which I'm leaving in the frame. And then I'm going to put my flowers in here, sandwich them together, and then put the back on. And then that one will be done. I am probably just going to paint it later on. Not anytime soon right now but since i have a whole bunch of these other frames like i have a bunch of these four by six white ones and also these five by seven gray ones that i really like my idea for these is to just use the frame but then basically take the glass out of another one and double it up for one frame the only thing wrong with this though is obviously the point of having two sheets of glass is to see through it but then you can see these ugly little marks. So I might, I don't know, I'll have to come up with something creative to cover those up. But for right now, I'm doing the Dollar Tree ones. And I think I'm just gonna look through here. I might use a couple of these pink ones and then just have the baby's breath around it. And then maybe a second one, I'll do like those yellowish ones. We'll see, we'll see what I like. Okay, I finished the first one of those. I just did something really simple. And now for the second one, I am gonna do what I was talking about where I take one of these frames, or I guess two of them. I take the glass out of one and put it in the other so that I can have that two layers of glass. And I've come up with an idea to cover these ugly prongs. This little sheet that comes in it, I just drew lines of where the prongs reach out to. And I am going to use my little paper cutter to cut this down and then I'm gonna trace this onto a white sheet of paper and then literally just cut out a frame that's just this wide. So it's basically like making it matted. That's kind of what this is. So I'm gonna have this little paper frame that just goes around this far, just enough to cover these prongs. Okay, remember how I said the picture frames are from Dollar Tree? <laughs> One of these broke off. I do have the two layers of glass, and so far the frame does look like it's covering all of them, so you won't be able to see it. I should have been a little more careful on this side because it, it just snapped. It snapped off. So, But luckily, the other ones are fine, so this, this should still work. Reveal in three, two, one. These are all the flowers I made. So this is the one that I took two regular frames and I took the glass out of one of them and put it in the other one so that I could make the double layered glass to put the flowers in. And then I cut out this little paper rectangle frame so that you wouldn't be able to see the prongs on the back. This one is my favorite one because I love all the roses and I do think the baby's breath looked really good in it. The only thing that I am unsure about with this one that I, kind of wish I would have done differently as the green background. Part of me wonders if I should have left it white, but if I would have left it white, then I feel like it would just kind of take away from the baby's breath. So I like that it's green. I just don't really like the color of green. I wish I would have done a darker green. So at some point I might get like some watered down acrylic paint. And obviously I can't just take the back off and repaint the whole thing since I glued the flowers in it. So if I wanted to just repaint the whole back, I would have to rip out the flowers and that would just ruin the whole thing. But I could get some tiny paint brushes and you know, just kind of stick them in there like this and, and dab it and paint the main areas that I can see. But even by doing that, it still is risky because I don't want to accidentally paint the flowers. Even with it being such a light green background, I do still think it looks really pretty. And then this one was the Dollar Tree frame. And I actually am happy with how this one turned out. This one's probably my next favorite, so. Favorite, second favorite, least favorite. The only reason this one's my least favorite is just because of this flower. It's just so brown. But other than that, I mean, I really like all of them. And I think I'm gonna hang them up in my bathroom. And I am kind of unsure of whether or not I wanna paint this frame just cause I do have a good amount of options for frames. And since I do have two more of these black ones, it might look good with them all being black. None of my other frames are black or a color this dark. They're all lighter colors or white. 
but I think it might look okay if I end up using all three of them and keeping them all three black. So we'll see over time when I get some more flowers that I can press. But yeah, I really like them and I hope that I can find more of these frames at Dollar Tree so that eventually I can paint some more of these. And especially because these are the cheapest frames that have the double layered glass I could find anywhere. Because the ones I bought from Hobby Lobby, this one's from Hobby Lobby. I looked at the original price. Yikes. $18 for a five by seven shadow box. Now I did buy them on sale. I don't remember how much off they were. I, I wouldn't guess more than 30 or maybe 40%. I, I really don't think it would be more than that. But even so, it's still kind of a lot. And I did buy those two up there. And those were expensive too. You can see, oh, you can actually see the price on that one. $16 for a frame. As opposed to a $1 or probably a $1.25 now that Dollar Tree has upped their prices a little bit. Much cheaper. Probably, definitely not more than $5. Honestly, I doubt it would be that expensive though. Hopefully I can find more of these. But yeah, that is all. Excuse the bad lighting. I was filming the majority of this video earlier when there was daylight out and now it is like 11 o'clock at night. So I just have to rely on overhead lighting now. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, subscribe, like it, leave a comment, do whatever you want. But thanks for watching. Bye.